So Arabic words have root letters and those root letters can be morphed. Okay, they can be morphed in order to form many other words. So in this course, we will focus on learning about patterns that root letters follow to morph into different words. In order to get a better idea of what we mean by morphology, I'll share some examples of how English words also morph. This is one thing I like to do when I'm teaching is I like to give examples from English because you already know English, you speak English, you understand English. So if I can show you how Arabic is similar in certain ways and that lets you know you can also learn Arabic just like you learned English. All right, so for example, let's take some examples in the English language, okay? That kind of relates to this idea of morphology. We'll take, we'll take the word fast and we'll take the word smart. Now we understand what fast means, we understand what smart means. Now we can morph these words by making a, a little addition and change the meaning a little bit. So if I write ER to the end of fast, we get faster, which means what? It's like a comparative adjective, okay? Somebody is faster than someone else, right? There's a difference between being fast and being faster, all right? And we can take the same addition to fast and we can add it to smart. Smarter. We know what smart means, to be smart, and we also understand what smarter means. There's a difference, okay? And if, and if you check it out, fast and smart, they're different words, but the addition had the same effect. It was the same addition and it had the same effect. Both became like these comparative adjectives, okay? So when it comes to Arabic, when we're talking about morphology, it's very similar, okay? There are root letters, and we just might change the harakat, okay, which are the symbols that are written above and below um, an Arabic letter, which we learn in Institute Volume 1. You might add other letters to the beginning or the middle or the end, okay? But uh, there are certain patterns, just like this is a pattern, and they have the same effect. So just like you can understand this, you can understand morphology when it comes to Arabic. So this is just to give you an example to understand what we're talking about when it comes to morphology. And then we get to lesson one, we get right into it. And the way that I set up all of my lessons is I give you a short, simple, clear lesson, inshallah, and then I give you exercises. So I'm gonna teach you something, and then I'm going to ask you to basically answer questions just to see if you can remember, if you can relay the information. And inshallah, this is a, an effective way to learn and to solidify information. And it's also fun. It's fun being quizzed, you know, get, getting asked questions. So in the first lesson, we talk about three-letter roots. Most Arabic words have a three-letter root, and many different words can branch off of that root. So for example, look at the following three root letters. Look at the following three root letters. Here we have the letter calf. This is the first root letter. We have the letter ta. This is the second root letter. We have the letter ba. And this is the, the third root letter. Now remember, Arabic is from right to left. Okay, Arabic is from right to left, which we learn in volume one. The following different words are created by morphing these three root letters. So you see, we have the calf, the ta, and the ba, and those are three root letters. But then all of these words down here, all of these words down here are formed by morphing, by morphology, morphing these root letters. So for example, we have kataba. This means he wrote. He wrote. Kataba. This is called, anyone know what these symbols are called? Tell me in the chat if you know what those symbols are called. These symbols that are written above a letter, they're called harakat. But what is this haraka called? Very good. This is called a fetha. It's called a fetha. Okay. So kataba, he wrote. That is one way to take these, these three root letters and morph them into a word. We can also write, I'm going to keep the, the root letters in red. Katib. 
Katib. Anyone know what this harakah is called? We said this is called a fatha. Anyone know what this harakah is called? A kesra. Very good. This is a kesra. Yeah, so katib. This means writer. Okay, you see it has the same three root letters, but it's just morphed to, to create different words. All right, we have a bunch here. Here's another. Well, I'll write one more. Maktub. Maktub. Anyone know what this harakah is called? Dhamma. Very good. Dhamma. Anyone know what this symbol is called? This symbol is called a sukun. Very good. A sukun. And, and a sukun means that there is no harakah. Okay, there's no vowel sound. Okay? Maktub. So if you look at these examples, and there's more. There's more on the paper. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the paper. All right? So you have Katiba, he wrote, Katib, writer, Kitab, book, Kitaba, handwriting, Maktub, written, Mekteb, desk, Mektaba, library. And all of these words, they all share the same three letter root. But what are we doing? We are just changing the harakat and we're adding letters, which is changing the meaning. But all of the meaning, all of the meanings are related. Right? All of the meanings are related. They're all related to writing. Katabah, he wrote. Katib is a writer. Kitab is a book. Kitaba is handwriting. Maktub is written. Maktab is desk. It's where you write. Maktaba, it's a library filled with books that are written. All that we did was number one, we changed the harakat. Right? We changed the harakat. These have fathas. This has a fetha and it has a kasra. This has a, a fetha and a dhamma, right? We changed the harakat, that's number one. And number two, we added other letters. We added other letters. You can see the additions in black. The root letters are in red, the additions are in black. We added an aleph here. We added a meme here, we added a wow here. Okay, so those are the two things that we did. We changed the harakat and we added other letters. However, this was not done randomly. Rather, specific types of words are formed by following specific patterns. So for example, the following four words all have three-letter roots. While their three-letter roots are different, you'll see that they all follow the same exact pattern regarding their harakat. So let me give you an example, all right? First, I'm, first I'm just gonna write the root letters, then I'm gonna write the harakat, okay? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. These are four words. Each word consists of three root letters. So what we want to point out is that even though they have different root letters, all of them are going to have the same harakat. They're all going to share the same harakat. Just like, remember, in the beginning we showed smart, smarter, fast, faster. Fast and smart were different words, but we added the ER to the end of it to give a specific meaning. Likewise, we're just going to add fethas on every letter. We're just going to add fethas on every letter. So these are four different words, each having different three-letter roots. However, they're all on the same pattern. They all share the same harakat. And because they are all on the same pattern, this pattern, it has a specific meaning. Okay, and the specific pattern indicates a past tense masculine fi'l. Okay, we go over the types of words in volume two. We talk about the fi'l, the ism, and the harf. Okay, but all of these having the three letter roots with fathas above them, this gives, this indicates that these are past tense masculine fi'ls. Okay, so it all means he did something. Okay, masculine. He. He did something in the past, but what did he do? Well, we have to look at the root letters to see what meaning do, do the root letters give? Okay, kataba means he, he wrote, he wrote. This is a fi'l, okay? This is a past tense masculine fi'l, a past tense masculine verb, basically. He wrote. Khalaqa means he created, he created. I bet that means he worshipped. He worshipped. Atala means he killed. So the point is, 
When we're talking about morphology, these words, they're not created randomly, but rather there are patterns that are followed. So it says, note, each word has different three-letter roots, but they all have the exact same pattern of harakat. All right, that's clear, inshallah. And then the last part of this lesson, lesson one, is we can form other words using those three-letter roots by morphing them into other patterns, right? So this is one pattern, putting the, the fatha, but there are other patterns. So for example, I give you another pattern. So another pattern is, all right, so these are the root letters, but... The pattern, right, the, the, the root letters are different, but the, they're all going to have the, the same change in harakat and the same addition of letters. So we're going to add a fat, uh, sorry, we're going to add a fatha, an alif, and a kasra. An alif, a fatha, and a kasra. An alif, a fatha, kasra. Alif, fatha, kasra. Okay? So we have... Katib, Khaliq, Abid, Qatil. All right? And this gives the meaning of an ism or a noun doer of the action. Okay? A doer of the action. So, Katib means writer. Khaliq means creator. Abid means worshiper. Qatil means killer. Is this making sense? This is morphology. This is morphology. All right, you see the roots are the same and the roots, because they're different, they have, they indicate a certain meaning. But then the harakat and the letters, they can form patterns that have also a specific meaning related to the root. So, kataba, he wrote, katib, writer. Khalaqa, he created, khaliq, creator. Abada, he worshipped, abid, worshipper. Qatala, he killed, qatil, killer. So this is, this is morphology. This is Arabic morphology. This is one of the most beautiful things about Arabic, is, is this part of it, is the morphology of it, how roots come in different patterns and are related one to another. And it's not difficult for those who might think this is difficult. Um, you just have to take it one step at a time. So in vo so you have to start with volume one, you learn how to read, then you go to volume two, and those letters come together to form words. I teach you what a fi'l is, what a ism is, what a harf is, you build your vocabulary. And then this is volume three. So if, if this seems a little bit advanced, and that's because you know, it's volume three, so it is advanced depending on where you're at. And this is the first lesson of volume three.